Out of all the videos that I'm going to be covering with respect to Dolby Atmos, this might be the most important video. So if you only watch one video with Dolby Atmos, make sure that you watch this one because this is so important. And in my opinion, this has been done brilliantly. The integration that Personas did with the Dolby Atmos renderer, I, I'm not just saying this because this is my preferred DAW, but they have done a really amazing job with this. And what I mean is that it is so easy and it is almost impossible to mess this up. It's it's implemented brilliantly. You have the ability to just have everything set up. You have you have the ability to hop on headphones and work in stereo and down mixing and everything is great. That being said, there's one thing that you really need to take into account when you are working with Dolby Atmos and it has to do with LFE channel. So let's talk about the LFE channel for a moment. For a lot of people who are watching this video, and I'll even put myself in this category because it's been a while since I've been in the world of surround, is that when we think about an LFE, this is something that's played back by a sub. And when we think about subs, we think about subs in terms of low end. A lot of people, myself included, like to mix with a sub. This is called the 2.1 system. Now there's different ways that you can mix with a sub. One way would literally be you take the main outs of your interface, that goes to the subwoofer, not your speakers. And then out of the subwoofer, you have a main left and right that goes to your speakers. And then you set what's called the crossover point. So if you set that to, let's say 80, that means that your subwoofer will automatically lop off or cut off anything that's going to your main speakers below 80. So your main speakers are in charge of 80 Hertz and above. And then you set your subs crossover to somewhere around there. And then you get them kind of level matched. And the idea would be that the sub handles all the low end of your information, of your audio, and then your speakers handle everything from 80 Hertz and above. And if you get it set up right, it's a beautiful thing because you can monitor at lower levels and still feel the impact. And if you're the type of person who really needs to feel low end and bass and thump and punch, then a sub can come in really handy. If we talk about an LFE, even though it's the same speaker that's playing back the information, the LFE channel is something completely different when you talk about Dolby Atmos for music and cinema and for surround work. The LFE channel stands for, stands for low frequency effect. Some people call it low frequency enhancement, but essentially what the LFE does is it is for simply enhancing very specific elements. It's often used for explosions or like underwater stuff that needs to be felt and not necessarily heard because it has the ability to produce a much lower frequency range. What makes it even more confusing is the way that the LFE channel is actually kind of like a mono summed mix of everything and the fact that it is indeed full range. So it might be easy to think to yourself, oh, it's an LFE channel. It's probably just low, inf low end information. And that is the end goal of what you want to do, but that's not the way that things work right out of the gate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop over to um, a website from Dolby, and this is how should I route the LFE in a Dolby Atmos music mix. Now we're looking at a Pro Tools screen here. It doesn't matter. It's the same regardless of which DAW you are. But I'm going to read this because it's important. Many of the DAWs that now support Dolby Atmos have an LFE feed that can be utilized directly from the multi-channel panner. While this is useful in certain circumstances, it's recommended not to use it and instead create a dedicated send from the channel to an LFE bus. Okay, it gives exact settings of what they recommend doing as well. So that's what we're going to set up in Studio One. In a perfect world, we could send out the LFE channel and it would be full range content, but every single playback system, whether that's a consumer-based system or whether that is a high-end soundbar or anything that's capable of reproducing surround or Atmos content, would automatically do this for us. It would automatically create an EQ that has a low cut and a high cut, so it wouldn't matter that it's full range, it would be filtered. It would be pre-filtered and it would be mixed in. The problem comes from the different playback systems, especially when you talk about consumer formats and things like that, is a lot of them have something that is called base management. This is where it gets tricky because what this essentially means is that you have a playback system, could be anything, it could be something that's kind of using some tricks to make it seem like it's more, or it could be an actual 7.1.4 playback system. But the actual speakers, they're really small and they sound amazing in terms of their basic mid-range content. They're crisp and they're clear, but they don't have the ability to reproduce low frequencies. Now, because of the way we perceive hearing low-end information, 
One trick that's often done is something that's called base management, where basically the decoder in the receiver that you're using to play back the surround or the Dolby Atmos mix will actually say, okay, I know that these speakers are all supposed to be full range, but what we're going to do is we're going to cut off everything below, and I'm making up a number here, we're going to cut off everything below 100 hertz or 80 hertz. And from 180 or 100 hertz and above, we'll pass that on to all these tiny little speakers, and they're going to sound incredible, and you're going to be able to crank them, and they won't distort. And then anything that should have gone to them in terms of low-end content, that's now going to go to the LFE. And in that case, the LFE is actually being used the way that we use a sub. It's being used to extend the frequency range of our speakers, except for instead of a stereo pair, it's being used to extend the frequency range of potentially seven different speakers, right? If you're talking about a surround system and the ones that are up top. So this is where it gets complicated because if things aren't done properly, then you have the potential for an absolute disaster and an absolute mess. So one way that we can work around this is by simply following Dolby's guidelines and setting up a dedicated LFE send. So that is what I have done here. The way that I have decided to set this up, there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. I think this is the best one, and this is how I would personally set it up. What you need to do, first of all, let's hide this for a moment, is simply right-click and you want to create a bus channel. So not necessarily add bus for selected channels, but just create a bus channel. Now, this is where it gets a little confusing because in other DAWs, if you create, for example, a 7.1.4 path in terms of the bus, this is something that Studio One does for us automatically by simply going into our outputs and, and saying, I want this to be 7.1.4. Now this is a 7.1.4 bus or a 7.1.4 output. In other DAWs, it will create the main output, but then it will also create subpaths. So you would have direct access to send directly to the LFE or directly to the center or directly to a left and right stereo pair. This is not the way it works in Studio One. So in this regard, we have two different choices. The first choice would be to leave this set to 7.1.2, which is what is going out to our bed. There's no sense to go any further in terms of our channel width or our track format. And then I could actually do the trick that we that we learned over here, where I could alter option solo the LFE channel, and then I could isolate this. And now we are sending something directly to this bus, but it's only coming out of the LFE channel. And unfortunately, there's no way to route directly to the LFE as an output, so this is the way we have to do it. The way that I would approach this, though, is not by doing this at all. What, what I would do is I would actually make this mono. And in that case, notice that this changes here from mono to 7.1.2. And in that case here, I'm just alter option soloing. I'm muting everything but the sub. And in this case, I'm guaranteed that I have only one mono source. And LFE is a mono stream or a mono branch. This is the way that I would set this up. So that being said, let me remove this for a moment because I have already created this. And the reason I wanna kind of show you what I've done here is because I have some plugins that I've inserted. First of all, we don't need the mix tool on here. Here is our drum loop. This is the file that we're working with. In this case, our LFE, and this is the way the Studio One Painter comes by default, it's a good thing. Our LFE send on the surround painter is deactivated, and we don't have the ability to change the level. But in this case, what we're going to do is we are going to just quite simply, we can create a send to the LFE bus that we have. This is set to minus six, which is a default level that this is sent. So what I'm going to do here is we can do this in a couple different ways. One thing that it's not necessarily listed, at least I don't think it's listed here in terms of adding a limiter, but it is a good idea to add a limiter. So I've added the stock Studio One limiter with a threshold set to minus one, gain at zero, ceiling at zero. This will just protect me from any overs. And the next thing that we can do is we can just add an EQ. In this case, I'm using Pro-Q3. And the main reason I'm using Pro-Q3 is because we have a linear phase mode. I have my first filter, 20 hertz at 24 dB per octave, and my second one, I've got it at 150 hertz at 24 dB per octave. Let me double check what these settings are over here. Uh, we'd say 120, okay. So there is this setting over here. Let's go to 120. Now, if we take a listen to this now, watch what happens now. If I take the spectrum meter and I apply it after my Pro Q3. Now you can see that we are actually filtering off our LFE as requested or as required by, or as suggested or recommended by Dolby. 
for best practices. One other thing that I want to mention, if now I want to put this and kind of like wrap this up all together, and then we need to address one more thing at the very end of this video. But now let's listen to the two of these in combination together. When you're talking about an LFE, we are not necessarily using this to give something a super amount of low end because this fold down is just meant to be used to enhance something on very specific systems. But if it's being played back down in a stereo format, it actually doesn't get recalled at all. It just gets thrown out. We're listening now in binaural. So if I, if I listen to this and I solo this out, we're listening to our filtered LFE send that's coming off of this channel. We're listening to both of them together now. But watch what happens if I change the stereo from binaural. Keep in mind, I'm recording what I'm hearing on my headphones and what I'm monitoring as, that's what's being recorded for this video. Watch what happens if I change the stereo. Notice that it still shows up as being present in the Dolby Atmos renderer, but we're not hearing it. It gets thrown out on an actual stereo fold down. So for this reason, this is why I say, and this is why it's good practice, that you never want to rely on the LFE channel to give your actual content its low-end information. You still want to rely on the same tools you always have. So this is where the level becomes important. So we have an LFE send that is going directly from this channel. I don't think I would necessarily use an LFE send, but maybe if I had the isolated kick drum mic or a sub kick mic, or maybe if I had bass guitar or synth bass or anything like a sub drop or a, like, a, like a swell or something that had a ton of information and sub content, I would send a little bit to the LFE directly from that track. And keep in mind, the surround panner on the individual track, that the LFE is always going to be bypassed. It should just always be off. And then we use our send. Now, in terms of how this would be layered in, you're not going to be layering this in at full unity gain and full unity gain. The reality is you'd be probably layering this in somewhere like minus 30 or minus 40 or minus 25, whatever fits the context of the song. So this is what we're listening to. And also, you're not going to hear this if you're listening on anything other than a set of headphones that can reproduce these low-end frequencies. But the reality is that it would be tucked in much lower. We're barely tickling the meter here. Take a look at where we are here with our LFE channel, okay? One other thing that you can do if you are worried about things phasing and not having a linear phase on both of those EQ cuts is if you have something that's like um, a subharmonic um, activator or something that will actually slightly alter the sound that will generate some harmonics in that super low end content, you can do that. And that will potentially get your signals to sound a little bit different. But even just this as a starting point, making sure that you create that mono send and it is dedicated for the LFE only. And then you're never using the LFE send from any panner at all. You're never using that ever. And the benefit here is that even if we are routed, even if this track is routed to an object, versus a bed, if I was to change this, uh, this routing and I went to a spatial object panner, we are still sending to an LFE and the LFE goes to the bed. But our LFE channel will always go directly to the 7.1.2 bed and we never have to worry about anything. The only other thing I'll mention is like I said, the minute we go into stereo, we lose the LFE altogether. So this is another reason you wanna use this sparingly and it's just used as an enhancement to something that already sounds good. It is in no way meant to be something to actually give you low end where your mix relies on that. And if you mute it, it falls apart. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you in the next one. Cheers.